Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ed Main, Director of Insurance Sales here at Aegis. I still see a lot of people logging in. We're having them uh, uh, come in real quick, so I'm going to just slowly start off here and just welcome you uh, and thank you for taking time out of your busy days to join us for a few minutes and learn a little bit about our new released manufactured and mobile home products. I'm going to keep this fairly brief. Uh, everybody here knows or should know how to quote and bind in our system. So what we're going to do is just for a few seconds here, go through a few slides, talk about what we're offering, um, some of the properties that we will cover, some of the coverage options. Uh, and then again, take uh, any questions that you have uh, as we move through this uh, presentation. Again, we have the question section open, and if you uh, ask a question, we do our best to answer that for you. We're also going to dive briefly into a quote. I'm going to walk through a, a mobile home quote for you so you can see actually how it looks. It's basically the same as everything else that we do with a few tweaks to it, so I want to make sure to be able to, to answer any of those questions as we move through a quote uh, uh, process itself. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I do see People still logging in, but I'll try to start off a little slow here. Uh, we understand that you're very busy and don't want to keep you here all day. So with that being said, uh, it launches on the 23rd. So it is in the system today. Uh, when you go to log in uh, and put in your zip code, you're going to see your normal line of business drop down. You will see the manufactured home drop down now available. Uh, but if you try to start a quote without per putting March 23rd, or later as the effective date, it's not gonna let you uh, move forward. So you can quote and bind as long as the effective date is this Saturday or later. Uh, come next week, you don't have to worry about that. It'll just automatically allow you to kind of quote uh, and bind business. So we're gonna talk about what do we insure, some of the, again, the product highlights, coverage highlights, and again, a live quote demo inside of our system um, for you guys to see how it works and how it actually processes the information. So manufactured and mobile homes are a little bit different in the sense of your standard uh, property products. Um, we are going to be insuring a mobile home, uh, a manufactured home, tiny homes, and fifth wheels. So with all of these products that we're offering, there are kind of unique differences between all of them. Um, any of them can be in or outside of a park, uh, and they can be on private land as long as they are permanently parked. So in regards to a tiny home, uh, if you're insuring a tidy home, which is funny, I was in an office yesterday and uh, he had a tiny home, a 2018 um, tiny home that uh, was on somebody's land uh, that they then converted to their primary residence. We will insure those, again, as long as they're professionally built uh, and permanently parked. Uh, so you see the little image of the trailer there, same thing inside of a, a mobile home trailer parked. As long as it is permanently parked and not moving, we will insure those. So some of the product highlights, we do offer both replacement cost and ACV. Um, due to the cost, I always recommend going with the replacement cost uh, itself. Uh, you're gonna see some of the prices on these things from $300 up to maybe seven or $800, uh, depending on how much coverage you're giving. It's a very simple uh, replacement cost calculation. We do use the same 360 uh, valuation tool um, we'll go through having to put in just a bit more information and supply a little bit more information than you generally would on a standard homeowners. Uh, we do offer owner seasonal type uh, residences, uh, rentals. So if they are renting it out, such as uh, Airbnb, that is fine. Uh, we do also offer a tenant occupied, which is slightly different than the way we look at a DP3. A tenant occupied is like a renter's policy for a tenant who would then live there and then they would purchase that policy as a renter's policy. Uh, so they can do that under tenant as well as vacant home. So uh, we do allow that as well. Again, the address validation is part of the process in the 360 value. Uh, wildfire score it, scoring is determined, uh, again, at the beginning of the process to make it easy. We do take uh, a standard zero and up to a 2Y on the wildfire scoring risk. Uh, multiple payment options. So we do have 1, 3, 5, and 11 pay, which is uh, different than any of our other programs. You can bind with the insured a credit card, checking, or agency EFT. Option can be with checking or credit card, just to let you know. All right, let's move on to the next slide here. So coverage highlights. So the dwelling value, we take all the way down to 5,000 as a minimum, and up to 200,000 coverage A. 
uh, with a TIV total insured value uh, up to a 350,000. We do offer liability up to 300,000 as well. You can do a three, six, or 12 month with escrow bill option as well. And earthquake, flood, golf carts, trip collision, and you can schedule personal property, all are optional coverages that we'll show here in just a minute. And we did get our first question in here, and it's a great question. I'm glad you asked that because it is the biggest question <laughs> we've been getting for the last few weeks is, do you offer a DIC? Well, we do not today, but we are filing in the process of filing for our DIC uh, endorsement on top of the manufactured mobile home. It's uh, ever since last year, we've noticed there is a huge demand for the DIC product, not just on our uh, home side, but also as well, now that we're offering the mobile manufacturer on that side of it as well. Uh, I've been asking agents who've asked me if they know of any other carrier that is offering it, and uh, uh, we don't see that. So um, we will let you know. A couple other questions here. Do we offer flood insurance in all flood zones? Yes, we do, except for flood, zo flood zone V as in Victor. Um, let's see. I need to know, again, uh, the DIC for modular home, uh, another question just came in. You must have just joined. We currently do not offer the DIC endorsement. Uh, for this program, but it is in the process of being filed. We're hoping it has a pretty quick turnaround. It is a simple um, filing um, that is helping insurers, which the DOI definitely likes to uh, to see. Um, but right now, currently, as a lot of you, I'm sure, have heard, there are a tremendous amount of filings being submitted to the department, uh, rate increases, rate changes, uh, based on the last few years of losses. So we hope to get that slide through and have it out sometime Q3, Q4 this year. Um, let me see, another question comes in. Let's see, everyone has mobile home products. The SC will rock the business. Yes, it will. Uh, so if someone lives in their fifth wheel, they are not allowed to drive it to another mobile home park or travel on vacation elsewhere. That is correct. Um, they can, we do offer trip collision coverage uh, if the event of they are moving uh, or bringing that to their location, permanent location, uh, that is fine. Uh, do we require elevation certificates for flood? We do not. Our underwriting runs that on the back end, and if it comes up into that one zone, uh, then they will let you know what else is needed. All right, I'm going to try to move on here. So what I'm going to do next is go ahead and just dive uh, right into a live quote and uh, show you exactly how it works, and then, and then once we're done with that again, please keep the questions coming. So let me go ahead and get to our portal. Give me just a quick second here. All righty, a couple more questions coming in. Let's see, any chance the liability will have a higher limit offered in the future? Uh, that's a great question. We are filed slightly higher than 300,000. I believe it's 500,000, but as of today, we're just doing it at 300,000. Um, will claim adjuster or in-house or contract adjuster? Uh, will claim adjusters are in-house or contact? So we do have our own uh, claims team. I mean, Aegis has been around since 1977, a uh, very strong claim department. Uh, so if a claim is turned in, it's handled by the exact same people that handle our claims today, which are in-house employees. Uh, one side note here, we do not inspect uh, manufactured mobile homes uh, when they are uh, bound, uh, unlike our home and dwelling product which we do inspect seven to 10 days after it is bound. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and log in here real quick. I'm gonna take you to our test environment. So give me a second. Do we offer standalone flood? No, we do not. Uh, the flood is added as an endorsement. Yes, it is. It's, it's uh, on our own paper or on our own site when you buy it. And I'll show it here just in a second here. Give me a quick second and I'll show you how that works. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And, and one kind of unique thing about the mobile home, um, again, is when you go to, to get to that 360 replacement cost, uh, sometimes it's going to pull up the information on that property, sometimes it's not. And the home I chose today uh, kind of does a little bit of both, so I'm going to show you how that works here. So, again, just as normally you would, start with your zip code, line of business is going to be manufactured home, and again, effective date needs to be 323 or later for you to go ahead and quote it. If you try to put today's date in there and hit new quote, you will get an error message. Actually, inside of our demo, we may, yep, there it is. Okay. So our demo site is slightly different. Some of the test stuff is done here, but this is what you'll see. So it says the effective date is not available. So just remember to go ahead and 
close that and change it to the 23rd or later and then start a new quote. Uh, does the insured require to have prior insurance? So again, that's another great question. Uh, there cannot be a lapse of over 90 days. All right, so this is normal name, birthday, and address. We do run the loss history on these, so we do want the birthday in there. Um, so another question, do you have to run replacement costs on a mobile home or can a client pick the coverage A? Uh, we really would like you to run the replacement cost estimation um, but if you want to override that again, that's fine. So here's the address, 3667 Valley, if I can type, Boulevard, and then I'm going to put, it's space 95, but I'm just going to put 95, tab, 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 and then it says, is this what you mean? So it validates the address, put the proper spacing in the right area. Is the home in a, located in a national forest? We do accept that, but not in this scenario. Same thing as it over 2,500 feet, not in this scenario. Uh, 12 months, again, you see the sticks and three months are there. Owner occupied and we're gonna choose replacement cost and hit continue. So what it does, it goes right into the 360. Now this one that we're looking at today, which is actually right, let me show you, which is right here. That is a 2019 Cavco West Sedona Ridge model. Uh, so what we find when we do our uh, 360 and then I confirm and validate the address, is 1962 with 1,432 square feet. So here on this one, this space, number 95, used to have that there, and I'm assuming they took it out and put this newer one in here. So we're just gonna go ahead and change that to 2019. And square footage on that is going to be 1,353. Uh, another great question, uh, how many prior losses can they have uh, to qualify in what time frame. So uh, this is slightly different in regards to the way we look at it. On our home side, we allow two claims in the last 36 months, uh, regardless of what they were or how much was paid out here. Uh, they can't have a single claim. They can have as many claims as they want under $500, but over 500, then no. You need to talk to underwriting about that one. Um, looks like we have another question that says, my drop-down box does not have mobile home as an option. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, you can email me directly once this is done. We'll just have to double check. But what we had to do is manually go into all of our users and add this in. So if we happen to miss you or you don't see it, uh, please let us know. Uh, do we have an age limit for the building? No, we don't. So there's no age limit there. Wood stove is accepted. Um, a tenant occupy the season. Wood stove acceptable as a secondary heat? Yes, as long as it's a secondary heat. All right, configuration on this one is a double wide. Once you look at the photo, you'll see here, double wide. And now, manufacturer or other. Now, you'll see here there are the primary manufacturers of mobile homes. Um, I'm not fully knowledgeable on all of these. Is, is I'm not just familiar with that side of it myself, but from what I'm told, this is a, a majority of them. All right, so what we're going to do if it's other, you just type in CAFCO like I did here, foundation type. You'll see there's some options there. Again, property slope, if there's a slope, let us know on that. Quality grade, default to standard. I'm assuming this brand new is gonna be luxury. And if there is a garage uh, or carport, you can do that here as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit calculate. All right, and there we go, 117,000. So both, it is the ACV because it is brand new as well as the replacement cost itself. So we're gonna go ahead and hit done here, return to quote. And excuse me if I happen to miss a question. I do apologize. There are quite a few questions coming in here. All right, so it takes us back into the dwelling information. Again, here is our wildfire score. As you know, writing our home and dwelling fire, that is in the same place. So we do run that on every single home. As you can see, we do not have red as required for both model and serial number. That is not required to bind a piece of business. I know a lot of lenders will want that information on there. So if you need to put it in, please go ahead and put that in there. Um, please slow down a little bit. I will do that. I apologize. Um, do you have mobile home or tenant occupied as well? We do. So we do allow owner, seasonal, tenant, rental, vacant. So we do offer pretty much every occupancy type that there is. 
All right, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And we're going to jump into the underwriting questions. So what I'm going to do is just go through these fairly quickly. Um, make sure that there is a smoke detector. Uh, the, does the manufacturer home have a primary heat supply that is not permanently installed? So we're going to say no on that. Uh, it's not an individual. It is professionally built, which we do require. We do require that it have utilities. That is not named in the business or corporation. That is not condemned. Uh, no unrepaired damage, no hazardous liabilities. So again, um, in regards to animal liability, we do accept, this is slightly different again from our home product, we do allow and ensure liability for any animal breed, including pit bulls and rottweilers. Um, but if that dog has a bite history, then the liability drops down to 25000 There's a trampoline again in the swimming pool. Uh, again, that drops it down to 25000 if they have a swimming pool on premise. Not counting if the park itself has one. That does not count. All right, we're going to hit continue. So if the unit was purchased within the last seven days, uh, farm animals uh, kind of fall under the same category. We do not ensure liability for the farm animals. Um, unit purchased within the last seven days, if we say no, has it been insured for the last uninsured for the last seven days. If we say yes, then it's going to ask for a effective date. So three, we'll just say three, one, 2019. If you do give an alarm discount, that's great. We do not, we ask that you do keep that on file. You do not need to submit that again, which is slightly different uh, than our home uh, product where you do have to submit that alarm discount. Uh, all right. Do they have a golf cart? So we do insure golf carts. So if they want to insure uh, their golf cart inside their park. We do allow for that, and we do have ACV replacement on those golf carts. And again, if it's located in a the park, then it's going to ask you 1 to 24 or 25 or greater, and hit continue. And yes, the 25,000 liability only applies to dogs. No, uh, so the, the liability for the policy, if they have a dog that has a bite history, will drop down to 25,000. All right, so here we are under the coverage limits. So here you can see the 117 is carried over. Uh, there's no, you can add attached structures. Again, just as a reminder, you can run your mouse over these little black info dots and see that information in there. All right, personal property, we're going to go ahead and say 25,000. Deductibles are two options, 500 or 1,000. We do want to add a replacement cost on there. You can schedule personal property, you'll see here. Uh, that you can do that, and then there's the information on how to do that. Personal liability, again, 25, 50, 100, or 300, so we'll go 100. Medical payments are 1 to 5,000. I'm going to go ahead and show you the price for both earthquake and mudslide. And you can see it does differentiate between each coverages, both coverage A and coverage C. Let's do this. Let's start without uh, mudslide. Let's just do the flood insurance. Trip collision, again, you can do that. Um, and then again, you can, if they have antennas or satellite dishes, you can increase that. Uh, we do allow for in service, out service coverage as well. So we're going to say no there. And we're going to hit continue. So there we go $562 for the entire year. Again, it gives the protection device discount, $25 credit there. Uh, deductible credit of 1000 versus 500 and there's your flood coverage of $150. So if we go back here and let's just take off flood, again, now we'll see that reduced down to $427. If we go back to earthquake, let's just go ahead and add in earthquake, cover J, cover C, and hit continue. And now it goes up again there. So earthquake, you know, depending on where it is, is going to vary dramatically. Uh, based on location. So let's go ahead and change that. Uh, we do not require a flood elevation certificate. Um, our underwriting team will do that on the back end for you. Um, we will not be able to bridge from FSC as of yet. Uh, we are looking to add that, add this to FSC here shortly. Uh, can we ensure a private lot? So it has to have an address. So uh, when we run this, we want to have an address that is verifiable. So if you have questions on that, I would recommend uh, discussing it with underwriting and they can go over that address for you. Uh, can you quote with the year built?
changing, let's say 1950, yes, we don't have an age restriction on the year bill. All right, so here are our billing options. So we got one, three, five, and 11. You can enroll in auto pay if need be. Now we're gonna to continue to the application. Uh, do we offer this program in Arizona? Uh, this program, uh, we are available, I wanna say in over 30 states. Um, if you are licensed in that state and you want access to it, please email me your uh, agency code and that state license, and I'm gonna forward that to the appropriate team that handles that. All right, cell phone number. We are still, we haven't activated it yet, but we are looking to uh, activate a text to insure for missing payments. So please try to get a cell phone if you can. If there's a different mailing address, you need to put that in there. Second name insured, third party designee, all the same there. We continue. Um, when do you expect the DIC number? Um, uh, don't sure if I understand that question. Uh, when we hope to launch that DIC endorsement sometime this year. Uh, the maximum coverage A again is 200,000. Uh, the policy specimen on the website. So uh, we're hoping by Friday, uh, if all goes as planned, uh, when you go to ageseasy.com, our site right here, under product guide, you should see another bubble here for the manufactured mobile home. We didn't want to put it up there yet just because we don't want to confuse people, um, but it will be there again soon. All right, I'm going to hit continue from here. Again, it's going to jump over some of these information uh, slots because we don't need to do anything additional to them. If you need to add additional or unattached structures, you can do that here as well. And we do allow you to exclude uh, an unattached structure if it's in poor condition. So we do allow for that. Um, let's see here. As you can see, it jumped past the coverages, the discounts. All of that just goes right past it because we already hit it. It did run the loss history, no losses identified. Uh, we Some other additional questions coming in. Any issues with needing to increase the dwelling value to cover the loan amount? Um, not necessarily. Uh, you know, We see that on the home side as well, but just know that if, you, if our replacement comes in at 117,000, and they have a loan for 150,000. Uh, just know that the replacement cost will be 117,000, and max cov A is 200,000. So here, a little bit different. You put your uh, lien holder, mortgagee, additional interest, but we also allow for additional insured if a park needs to be listed. So if you're in a park and they want to be listed on the policy, you can do it as an additional insured. All right, we're going to hit continue. Here we go. So we do not, uh, an extended replacement cost is not part of the policy. It's just replacement cost is kind of how we look at it for this. All right. So here we are again. You can print the quote from here. Now, try not to get too confused here, but you'll see if you run your mouse over this I, it's going to say a certificate or proof of active system must be submitted. You do not need to submit that uh, for that. All right. We're going to hit continue again. And again, we're at the final page. So if you wanted to change it to, let's say, an 11 pay, uh, both on current, it'll then break it out for you here. Um, you can do it right at the last minute. And we'll continue again. All right, so here we're at the final page. You can pay by insured credit card, insured checking, agency, EFT. And again, if you choose credit card, it'll make you put in the credit card information. So I'm putting in our magical uh, test credit card. So if you try to use this on Amazon, it will not work. So, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go ahead and hit save payment and pay now. Now, again, as a reminder, if you save for later from here, uh, it will take you right back to this page once you pull it back up. All right, so we're going to hit pay now. It's going to go ahead and bind it. We do allow for trusts, but not LLCs as the name insured. Okay, confirmation number. Now it's going to go ahead and submit it. And there we go. So now we're giving you your policy number right here, just as we do on our other stuff, and continue the documents. And another question again, if we get the DIC approved, how much uh, would coverage A maximum be? I'm assuming we keep it right at the 200000 Just to let you guys know, we are filed and approved for more. Uh, than that, but uh, the launch of this product here in California 
um, is staying capped at 200 for today. Uh, that can and may change in the future. Just on our home side, uh, we're at 800,000 coverage A, but we are, again, filed for higher than that as well. All right. Um, let's see here. And here is our application. You get your deck page, your evidence, and payment receipt all done there in real time. If you needed to upload a document to underwriting, you would just attach it right there. Say, so see attached. Uh, whatever may need to be required. In general, there's less information needed on these than we do on our home side. If you want to print out your deck page, uh, on a side note, just kind of remember, there we go. Uh, as you can see, there are 46 pages of a declaration page. I always recommend to just print out the first three pages, or two in this case. The rest are the trailing docs. And just as a reminder, we do send out all of this information right here to the insured as well. So they will get a nice white envelope with everything listed in here. And here is the application. Um, in regards to a signed application, again, you don't need to submit a signed application to us. We do want you to have that on file. We do accept all forms of digital signatures. So if you have Echo Sign, Adobe Sign, or whatever, DocuSign, whatever one you use, uh, we do allow for that. We are, again, in the process of uh, getting that added uh, to the policy itself. There is no timeline on that. It's in the early stages of discussion where you would bind it and be able to electronically send it over to a client. Uh, we do use Adobe for a lot of our backend stuff, so we hope to have that implemented uh, sometime soon. Uh, will it download? So we do have downloads. Uh, if you need downloads, um, please uh, complete the Ivan's download request form, which is right here. So under our producer resources, if you click on that, you'll see here we have all of our guidelines. We have our uh, brochures, our guidelines, and additional uh, requests such as IVANS or if you're adding an additional storefront or changing your EFT, uh, that's available. All is direct bill to client. Yes, it is. Um, if you need to register for our webinars, we have that here. And then also once a webinar is done, we generally put it up here within a few days. So our DIC webinar from last month is here. Our estimated dwelling replacement from last year is there. So we try to keep this updated and fresh for you guys. Um, let's see, a couple more questions have come in here. Let's see. Uh, what type of proof do you need for the protective device credit? So we're, we're not ultra picky in regards to that. As you can see, it's not a huge discount. Uh, $25, um, any kind of invoice, a payment receipt, anything that looks like is being paid for, uh, the device is fine. Um, my email, somebody's asked for my email, is emain, so E-M-A-I-N, at agesspecialty.com. I will be, once we're done with this, I'll go ahead and uh, email you over a PDF version of this webinar so you can have it, and you'll have my email on there as well. Uh, let me scroll back up. I think I missed a question here. Uh, Emily, uh, on your particular question, I'll give you a call back on that one. That's going to a little bit too detailed for this at this moment. Um, so uh, can I please get your emails for other states? Yeah, so again, if... The, the manufacturing of mobile home product itself has been around for a couple decades. Um, it's been sold through wholesalers such as uh, J.E. Brown, Appalachian Underwriters, Union General, and, and managed by a different team uh, out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So what we've done now is, is added it to you guys uh, direct access so you can go in and quote and bind it. So uh, it is available in, in other states. Uh, the product itself may be slightly different. Uh, but AGES Foundation is really mobile and manufactured home uh, outside of California and in California. They've been doing that a lot longer uh, than anything else they've ever done. So, uh, and then another question, um, why AGES offer commercial auto in other states but not in California? Uh, that's a great question, but uh, yeah, that is something I unfortunately cannot off answer as that's not uh, a division that I manage. Um, so with that being said, I've kept you guys on the phone for just over a half hour. I think I've tried to hit as many uh, 
things I could for you on this presentation. Uh, I will host another presentation again next week. If anybody on your team uh, wants to attend, I'll put that on our Ages Easy site. Um, again, I'll stay on the phone here for a few minutes if there's any last questions. Uh, just remember, we will be starting this on Saturday. So if you're quoting it, put in March 23rd. So with that being said, again, uh, I was an agent for 17 years. So taking 30 minutes out of your day uh, is always hard. And I really appreciate you doing that. And I'm available any given time. Uh, you'll get my information, cell phone, email, call me anytime. So again, thank you, everybody. And I'll just go ahead and mute it and stay here to, for any questions that may come in.